Pacifica. This is Democracy Now! We're broadcasting from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. A nation still in ruins. 300,000 people died six months ago. Six months ago today, the earthquake. Creole is terre tremblée. The earth trembled. 300,000 people died, one of the worst natural disasters in history. Six months later, today, still thousands lay under the rubble, dead. Most of the rubble has not been removed. 1.7 million people are displaced. There are 1,300 refugee camps. We'll go to one of those camps today. But first, we will speak with the former Secretary of State for Public Security, Patrick A. Lee, about his country. We'll go into the camps and we'll speak with human rights activists. This is Democracy Now! in Haiti. I'm Amy Goodman, but first we go to New York for headlines with Anjali Comment. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Anjali Comment. Oil from the Deepwater Horizon well is gushing unimpeded into the Gulf of Mexico as BP attempts to put a new cap over the well. BP says the new cap might eventually allow for the capture of all of the oil leaking from the well, but installation of the cap won't be fun finished until Wednesday at the earliest. Until then, an estimated 2.5 million gallons of oil will flow every day into the Gulf of Mexico. The Biloxi Sun-Herald of Mississippi reports BP has paid fewer than half of the claims filed by residents in the Gulf states who have been impacted by the massive oil spill. As of Saturday, BP had received about 103,000 claims, but had paid out less than 49,000. Meanwhile, officials in Louisiana have accused BP of reducing payments to tens of thousands of people whose claim files are incomplete. Much of the claim process is being done by the private company ESIS, which was hired by BP. ESIS describes the goal of its services as, quote, reducing our clients' lost dollar payouts. BP says the total cost of dealing with the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico has risen to $3.5 billion. In an effort to raise more funds, BP has reportedly discussed selling off its stake in Alaska's Prudhoe Bay field. Meanwhile, ex officials with ExxonMobil have approached U.S. government officials asking if they would object to a takeover bid for BP. A former BP contractor has accused the oil company of focusing on its profits more than cleaning up the oil spill. Up until recently, Adam Dillon served as a liaison between the media and the BP security contractors. In that position, Dillon reportedly rebuffed attempts by reporters to observe cleanup operations in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Dillon was fired after taking photographs that he believes were related to the use of dispersants and to the cleanup of the oil. Adam Dillon spoke recently to the New Orleans station WDSU. There's some very, very great, hard-working individuals in there, but the bottom line is just about money, and there are some very cutthroat individuals, and they're not worried about cleaning up that spill as it is. I will never have loyalty to this company. Uh, I will always have loyalty to my country, and my country comes first. And what this company is doing to this country right now is just wrong. In news from Africa, at least 64 people died Sunday in a pair of bomb explosions in Kampala, the capital of Uganda. One blast hit an Ethiopian restaurant where people had gathered to watch the World Cup finals. Ugandan officials blamed the Somali militant group, a Shabab, of carrying out strikes, but no arrests have been made in connection to the attack. The Washington Post reports Afghan President Hamid Karzai plans to seek the removal of up to 50 former Taliban officials from a U.N. terrorism blacklist in a gesture intended to advance political reconciliation talks with militants. Karzai's proposal has been met with resistance from U.N. officials, who are demanding more evidence that the individuals in question have renounced violence and severed any links with the Taliban and al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, hundreds of Afghans took to the streets of Mazar-e Sharif on Saturday to protest against mounting civilian deaths. The protests come days after two civilians in the city were killed by U.S. troops in a pre-dawn raid. And over the weekend, six more U.S. troops have died in Afghanistan. Twenty-three American troops have died so far this month. Attorney General Eric Holder said Sunday the Justice Department may file another lawsuit against the state of Arizona if the state's new immigration law leads to racial profiling. 
The new law requires police officers to stop and interrogate anyone they suspect is an undocumented immigrant. Eric Holder made the comment during an interview on CBS Face the Nation. It doesn't mean that if the law, for whatever reason, happened to go into effect, that six months from now, a year from now, we might not look at the impact the law has had and whether or not see whether or not there has been uh, that racial profiling um, uh, impact. And if that was the case, uh, we would have the tools and we would uh, bring suit on that basis. In related news, hundreds of immigrant rights activists gathered in Boston Saturday to protest Arizona Governor Jan Brewer. She was in Boston at the annual National Governors Association meeting. The American Psychological Association is supporting efforts to strip the license of a psychologist accused of helping to develop the Bush administration's torture methods used on foreign prisoners. The psychologist, James Mitchell, is under investigation by the licensing board in Texas. APA spokesperson Rhea Faberman said, quote, The allegations put forward in the complaint and those that are on the public record about Dr. Mitchell are simply so serious and, if true, such a gross violation of his professional ethics that we felt felt it necessary to act. Mitchell was a partner in the firm Mitchell, Jessen & Associates, based in Spokane, Washington. The Associated Press is reporting Toyota has withdrawn funding for Southern Illinois University after one of the school's professors exposed major flaws in the electrical system of Toyota vehicles. The professor, David Gilbert, was among the first to suggest that electronics, not sticky gas pedals or badly designed floor mats, caused the unintended acceleration problem that led to the recall of millions of Toyota vehicles. After Gilbert spoke publicly about his findings, two Toyota employees resigned from an advisory board of the school's auto technology program, and the company withdrew offers to fund two spring break internships. And a Libyan ship carrying humanitarian aid is heading toward Gaza in the latest attempt by international activists to challenge the Israeli naval blockade. Members of the Qaddafi Foundation says it is not looking for a confrontation with Israel. Gaza has been the world's biggest number one open prison, open jail. People in Gaza have been in jail for the last, you know, number of years, and everyone is witnessing that. So I think it's it's high time that the international community delivers some humanitarian goods and help ease on finally lift the blockade as a step towards realizing proper peace in the Middle East. Israeli officials say the ship will not be allowed to reach shore. Daniel Hershkowitz is the Israeli Minister of Science. Israel uh, hasn't changed uh, its policy, and its policy is very clear. No ships will allow to arrive at, uh, at Gaza. So uh, if they want to transfer the humanitarian um, equipment there uh, to the people in Gaza, they are welcome to do it through Ashdod. In Panama, at least two striking banana workers have died during a series of protests against a new anti-union labor law. Banana union leader Antonio Smith died as a result of tear gas fired by security forces. Another banana worker was shot to death. And members of Greenpeace held a ceremony Saturday to mark the 25th anniversary of the deadly bombing of the Rainbow Warrior. Secret agents working for the French government blew up the ship in a har harbor in Auckland, New Zealand. A photographer named Fernando Pereira died in the bombing. At the time, Greenpeace was leading campaigns against French nuclear testing in the Pacific. Greenpeace International Executive Director Kumi Naidu said Greenpeace is now building a new Rainbow Warrior ship. This new Rainbow Warrior continues the rich traditions of resistance to environmental crime by Greenpeace and allows us to continue to fight for environmental justice and to avert catastrophic climate change and to secure this planet for our children and grandchildren. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Now to Haiti on the six-month anniversary of the earthquake.